on guys it is your boy Cecil here with a video here today bring guys a photoshop tutorial on how to create your very own cool one minute better design series insert title of the video here i have no idea what i'm going to call it yet but if you guys know what the one minute better design series is it's basically where i just kind of take really fun and kind of like unused or and or just not use any more filters and try to make something really cool out of them by kind of kind of combining them so i basically use liquify wave gradients and i kind of make something really fun and just kind of select just kind of use and add as a really quick effect so i also have the screen hopefully like step one two through six whatever and uh, so step one will be having your actual ba uh, abstract background step two will be your liquify of course the actual background itself and then rotate the picture and then go ahead and add the wave effect that'll give you guys a really cool effect when you actually have like little facets and you actually can see empty space in it and then adding your actual gradient fills and of course your text being the final step so it's super simple super easy and of course you can send five likes on the video you can do a secret down below as always well i will try to make it be like the gradients that you can also use in this effect as well but there should be a gradient and the actual picture in the description down below right now for you guys to use for the tutorial and uh, yeah let's just get this thing going and then hope you guys enjoy i'll see you guys in a second all right guys i think this is going right here right now so of course i want to start off by saying no matter what during this process you're going to get different effects in the sense of like what uh, however you liquefy it however you kind of mix it together but also you can get three different kind of uh how do you say styles with this kind of style so this being a like more of cleaner one i would say you know whatever you want to say and then version two being the actual full background being the cool effect that you get during these steps right and then having like a nice black black uh black back plate or some kind of like cool dark color to kind of sit over it or just mess around with the gradient itself and kind of make more darker elements mine's very kind of bright and orangey but if you use like purples and stuff you can definitely put like a white text over that kind of stuff and then version three just being like a mixture of both of them which is my least favorite but just kind of understand that you can get different cool effects in this process so think about that right so i'm going to start off with just literally pressing Control v on my keyboard which brings in the actual background that you guys should have as well in the description so my dimension size is file new <clears throat> whatever file new come on please help Come on, like Photoshop, dude, lately, I'm not gonna lie, you've been really struggling. 3000 by 1300 resolution, and I'm gonna press close, and I'm, well, you should press create, but this is the Twitter header dimension. If you guys wanna use the Twitter header, you can use this literally with any dimension, doesn't really matter, but just keep that in mind. So, once you have this dimension, you have your actual, uh, uh, how do you say, your background pulled in. I'll put Control T, and I'm gonna hold Alt, and just make this bigger, just like so. And I'll press enter once I kind of fix it and make sure it's all good and it fits the entire canvas. Then I'm gonna go to filter, liquify. Now I'd say this is the only important process during this where you can actually make some kind of like mistake or not get with you uh, what you want. The background itself is not really necessary in the sense of any reason besides the color, right? So if I use my liquify, my brush setting is around 200, uh, 2600 size, uh, 75 uh, pressure English is hard density at 100 and your first tool liquefied tool this little forward tool uh, is the first one you're gonna use right that wasn't English either we're just gonna go ahead and continue it's the first one okay so we're gonna click and drag and we're just kind of just mix these colors in together now what I was saying was the of course you have your purples your blues and kind of like your layer blues those are your dark colors right and they have your kind of like oranges and reds ish kind of tones and yellows those are your lighter colors right so you have the dark colors and lighter colors so be mindful that what you're mixing in together being the blues and uh purples the darker ones and if you want to have more darker colors the gradient itself is going to actually apply the color of those darker colors if you have the yellow and the oranges it'll apply that kind of like that lighter and white colors to that so if you have too much orange you're gonna get too much white if you have too many uh, purples and blues you're gonna have too much color so keep that in mind and kind of mix with a little bit of a thought process in there so have a little bit of mixture of both there's a lot of like orange in here so i'm gonna try to say can i get some blue behind it and i'll kind of stretch it again right and i would say this is pretty good for me and then make sure there's no empty spaces if there's an empty space just click, click in the middle pull down and it'll fill that space in press ok when you guys are finished and then I want to go ahead and press Control T to free transform once again. Take my right corner, hold Shift. The Shift actually, when I click on the right corner and move my mouse down, you'll see it, it rotates by 15 degree intervals. So I want to go to about a 45 degree angle. Let go, hold Alt and Shift. Click on this middle anchor point here. Click on it and then just drag my mouse towards the top right, just like so, and give myself a nice cool like stretch. And the only reason I want to stretch and make it a diamond shape is because the next step. You'll notice when I go to Filter, <coughs> Distort and wave right you'll notice in the preview section right here it'll apply that sort of like uh how do you say if you don't rotate it, the actual canvas itself your box here will be in full and that's how you know you already made a mistake so i'm gonna go ahead and take my uh, number of generators and put this at around 350 and i'm gonna have my wavelength up as well <clears throat> my amp uh amplitude put that down my scale over here this first one down this way and i'll move this now to kind of say what I kind of really want to have, if I want to put this up a little bit, I can, 
let's say let's put this up as well actually right about here so these settings i'm not going to say they're final but this is around the place you want to be so you can explore around these numbers so i'm going to say 560 right you can say 485 for both of these is what the number you can go for and then one mid and then of course one maximum or it can only be at two so one min one uh two max and then your scale this is being kind of like the main thing you want to move, actually move around but once you actually finish you press okay and make sure your type is on single actually if you click on triangle and square you can actually pretty i'll get some other cool effects so there's something to explore uh press okay then you're gonna hit one time uh that's pretty good it already kind of has a cool little effect to it but you want to press Control alt and f if you guys don't know what Control alt and f is over here you can see under over filter it applies the same filter that you already had before and uh, we're gonna do that again so Control alt f just like so we're gonna do it once that's being twice in total we're gonna do it one more time it being three times in total if you want to continue going more and you want to see like if i do it again you, you'll see it, it's a little bit too much for me here so i'm gonna go ahead and press Control alt z and go back so three in total right and i can move this now all right guys quick pause for a second i would like to say if you guys wanted to use this effect as a full-on background and like entirely apply it one to two times that'll give you a way cleaner look and this being at twice right here and of course then applying a gradient map to this will give you a way better look for actual background just so you guys know and i'm gonna say to myself i want to move this and kind of put this like let's rotate a little bit i kind of like how this is looking here Okay, let's just, I'm gonna just literally move it around and see if I can get something I like. If not, we can actually go back to like the wave and kind of fix it again. But I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of work with this. I'll find something I like. That's not bad. Okay, so now with this, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, make a duplicate. So Control J on my keyboard, just like so. So this layer one, I'm gonna go ahead and make a new layer, or excuse me, a gradient layer, gradient map. Now with this gradient map, you guys should already have this gradient in the description, by the way. And with this, I'm gonna scroll down. We're gonna click on this one. That is the black and white gradient that I'm using. And I'm gonna take this first layer here, turn this other one off, and make sure it's big enough that it fits the canvas. Okay, and there's no empty spaces, right? See, right about there is pretty good. That's good enough for now. But you can see this nice little sort of like uh, cool little lava-ish kind of black and white textures there. Now we're gonna go ahead and apply this one again. Now, if this texture is going to add also another gradient map, but this one we're going to actually clip mask to it. So we'll right click and create a clip mask. Click on this and we'll scroll this down. Click on this right here, the black and white. Oh, uh, excuse me, the uh, cool gradient for the orange and stuff. And then you'll see there's a lot of blue. So if I actually uncheck this, it'll be a lot of blue and purple in this area. That was what I was talking about. So if you don't have too, if you have too much of that color, you're going to get that weird sort of like mixture where it's just dark colors and looks kind of uh, awkward and kind of like muddy in a way. But if I kind of move around, you'll see that that's where the lighter areas are. So at this point in time, I'd probably say to myself, I would like to kind of like maybe restart it. But around here, by moving it a little bit more and kind of seeing where the whites and also the actual color mixes together, this is a better uh, alternative for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and just now click on a layer mask, right? What a layer mask does is I can take a black brush, black erases, white fills in, take a nice black brush. You can see the color is black right here. Just kind of erase over it and erase it just like so. And I'm going to go ahead and type in my good old word, which is going to be minute because we do that every single time. And Photoshop is actually struggling right now. I need to get a quick little restart in here soon, bro, because this is this is this is terrible. OK, quick restart. All that good stuff. Let's go ahead and add our text now. I'm going to go ahead and use this control T, make it bigger. I hope this where I mean, it's a little faster now, I guess. Um, so I'm going to control T. I like to kind of like shrink my text down with like a really cool font. This kind of works for it just like so right this font i'm actually using is gotham narrow if you guys want to try it, it's called gotham narrow ultimate uh ultra italic and i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna highlight ute and we're gonna go ahead and just make this orange right it looks pretty cool i would say it's like a staple i would say for me to put in that secondary color that you use for the gradient so by the way you're gonna have this gradient so if you want to change the color it's literally just as simple as literally clicking on the second one here and kind of just saying, hey, I want green, I want uh, another color, but when you fix it a green, make sure you guys go into the yellow, and if you kind of see a little bit of yellow hints in there, it's because you have to change this one as well, and you can see if you get some other really cool colors, if you want to just be pure green, but like around here, you can kind of see it gets kind of weird and muddy, but of course, be wary that you can, of course, change your colors, all that good stuff, right? So, you can put minute there, and I was going to put banner tutorial, and that right there is pretty much the tutorial on it so uh, that's it that's pretty much it right we're, we're, we're kind of under 10 minutes we're definitely pretty low i have no idea at this point but 
it looks pretty good and of course this looks super like sick if of course I would go back into the actual part where I step three or four or whatever where you apply the actual wave not doing it three or four times maybe even two times is probably a good amount but this is kind of like where the the kind of effect kind of sits but you can get a really cool clean effect if you kind of put less uh actual wave into it but hey with that being said that is today's tutorial here today that was I'm just learning a lot lately, honestly. Um, talk to you guys later. So that's what HQ outs. I love you guys so very much. I appreciate every last one of you guys, and I hope you have a freaking dope holidays. I think I have one more video, and I'll be on vacation, so I have to actually make more videos while I'm on vacation for two weeks. We're going to see what happens. I'm going back to New York with my family and enjoy that. And uh, yeah, talk to you guys later. So that's what HQ out. Gotta keep smiling. Stay positive and stay freaking productive, guys. Later. Much love. And I'll talk to you guys next time. Peace.